A, mes a message from a Muslim to a Catholic priest part 5. 11. Cleanliness. Muslims throughout the world have extremely high standards of personal hygiene because Islam places great emphasis on both physical and spiritual cleanliness and purification. Muslims are required to take care of their personal hygiene by assuring that they are well-groomed and that their bodies, clothing, and surroundings are clean. Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, informed us about the importance of cleanliness when he said, cleanliness is half of faith. Sahih Muslim More specifically, Allah, exalted be he, says, Allah loves those who frequently repent and he loves those who purify themselves. Al-Baqarah, 222 Allah loves those that frequently repent from their sins and are extra mindful of cleanliness. Al-Baqarah, 222 Personal hygiene is desirable at all times, however, certain aspects of personal hygiene are not only important but also compulsory. According to scholars, cleanliness is of three kinds, purification, or ritual washing in order to perform prayer, keeping the body, clothing, and environment clean, and specifically removing the dirt or grime that collects in the various parts of the body, such as teeth, nostrils, under the nails, in the armpits and around the pubic area. It is so important to be free from filth, both spiritual and physical. Physical purity is a precondition to perform any prayer and it is accomplished by using water. Allah, exalted be he, says, O you who believe, when you rise up for prayer, wash your faces, and your hands up to the elbows, wipe over your heads, and wash your feet up to the ankles. If you are in a state of major impurity, cleanse yourselves, by taking a bath. Al-Ma'ida, 6. O you who believe in Allah, follow his messenger and practice his laws, when you intend to stand up to offer the prayer and you are in the state of minor ritual impurity. Then perform ablution by washing your faces and then your hands together with the elbows, then wiping your heads and finally washing your feet together with the ankles. If you are in the state of major ritual impurity, then take a full bath. If you are sick and you fear that the sickness will get worse or the healing will be delayed, or if you are on a journey even though you are not sick. Or if you are in the state of minor ritual impurity, such as after going to the toilet, or in a state of major ritual impurity, such as after having had sexual intercourse. And you do not find water to purify yourselves with, despite having searched for it. Then make use of the ground by striking it with your hands and then wiping over your faces and then wiping your hands with it. Allah does not wish to make the laws difficult for you by forcing you to use water that may lead to harm or difficulty. He has therefore given you a substitute when this is not possible due to sickness or the lack of water. This is a completion of his favor on you, so that you give thanks for such favor and are not ungrateful. Almida, 6. Prior to obligatory or voluntary prayer, a person must assure that he is in a state of cleanliness. This is achieved by performing either wudu, often translated as ablution, or guzzle, a full bath. Wudu rids the body of minor impurities, and guzzle cleanses the body of major impurities. Guzzle must be performed after sexual intercourse or any sexual activity that releases bodily fluids. Guzzle is also performed at the completion of a woman's menstrual period or postpartum bleeding. Ritually cleansing the body by performing wudu includes washing the hands, rinsing the mouth and nose, washing the face, washing the arms up to the elbows, wiping the head, and beard. Washing the ears, including behind the ears and washing the feet up to and including the ankles. A person does not have to repeat this ablution for every prayer unless his wudu is broken by one of the following nullifiers. Urinating or defecating, passing wind, eating camel meat, falling asleep while lying down, losing consciousness. Directly touching the genital area or becoming sexually excited sufficiently to emit a discharge. The state of cleanliness is also compulsory before touching or reciting the Holy Quran. A woman is not supposed to perform prayer, enter the mosque or touch the Holy Quran until she is fully clean and the menses has stopped. For menstruation, guzzle is required after menses has fully stopped. For maternity, the period a woman must wait before guzzle is 40 days. Sexual intercourse also must not be practiced until this period of time for the two cases has passed and the woman is fully clean. Using toilet paper is not enough for Muslims to be considered cleansed after they have relieved themselves. Instead, water must be used unless it is not available. Under certain conditions, ritual purification can be achieved without water. This is called tayammum, or dry ablution. 
If water is not available in sufficient quantities, or if it would be dangerous to use water, for instance if a person was wounded or very ill, clean earth may be used instead. Tayamum is performed by striking the hands lightly over clean earth and then passing the palm of each hand on the back of the other. The dust is then blown off and the hands are passed across the face. These actions are performed instead of wudu or guzzle. The following ayah illustrates this ruling. But if you are ill, on a journey, or have relieved yourselves, or had sexual contact with women and find no water, then purify yourselves with clean earth, and wipe your faces and hands therewith. Allah does not want to impose hardship on you, rather he wants to purify you and complete his favor upon you, so that you may be grateful. al 6. If you are sick and you fear that the sickness will get worse or the healing will be delayed, or if you are on a journey even though you are not sick, or if you are in the state of minor ritual impurity, such as after going to the toilet, or in a state of major ritual impurity, such as after having had sexual intercourse, and you do not find water to purify yourselves with, despite having searched for it, then make use of the ground by striking it with your hands and then wiping over your faces and then wiping your hands with it. Allah does not wish to make the laws difficult for you by forcing you to use water that may lead to harm or difficulty. He has therefore given you a substitute when this is not possible due to sickness or the lack of water. This is a completion of his favor on you, so that you give thanks for such favor and are not ungrateful. Almida 6 The Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, include advice about actions that are part of a natural way to maintain personal hygiene. He said that, five acts are a part of phytra, natural instinct. Circumcision, shaving pubic hair, plucking hair from the armpits, shortening the mustache, and clipping the nails. Al-Bukhari and Muslim. 12. Prayer, Salah. Salah, Salat, is the Arabic term for the ritual prayer that is obligatory. For Muslims to perform five times a day. It forms one of the five pillars of Islam. The five prayers are, Far, Dawn, which takes place at pre dawn dur, Noon which takes place just after the sun reaches its zenith asr, afternoon, which takes place between noon and sunset maghrib, sunset, which takes place just after sunset isha, night, which takes place during the early night at night time. Sulla involves a number of physical movements standing, bowing, prostrating, and sitting. It also involves the recitation of ayat from the Holy Quran in Arabic along with a number of supplications. Muslims have to face the direction of the Kabye, the sacred house of Allah in Mecca, whenever they perform their prayer. These physical movements, recitations, and supplications are all done to show humility and submission to Allah. The principle of Salah is to ensure Muslims maintain their faith and devotion to Allah, to increase their closeness to Allah, and to remain conscious of the importance of faith and submission to their Creator. Furthermore, it is an integral part of the lifestyle of a Muslim. Through prayer, Muslims are required each day to ponder on the ayat of the Holy Quran, the testimonies of faith, and Allah's attributes. Allah, exalted be he, orders Muslims to perform salah, saying, Be mindful of the prayers, especially the middle prayer, and stand before Allah in complete devotion. Al-Baqara 238. Guard your prayers by fulfilling them completely as Allah has instructed. In particular, guard the middle prayer, which is the ASR, afternoon, prayer, and stand before Allah in submission and devotion. Al-Baqarah, 238. Allah, exalted be he, also says, Recite, O Prophet, what is revealed to you of the book, and establish prayer, for indeed prayer restrains one from immoral acts and wickedness. Indeed, the remembrance of Allah is of greater merit. And Allah knows all what you do. al Ankabut 45 Read O Messenger to people what Allah has revealed to you of the Quran and do the prayer in the most perfect manner. Prayer that is discharged perfectly restrains the doer from falling into sins and wrong. Because it creates a light in the heart that prevents the perpetration of sins and guides the person to doing righteous deeds. The remembrance of Allah is greater than and superior to everything. Allah knows everything you are doing. None of your actions are hidden from him and he will recompense you for them. If they are good the recompense will be good and if they are evil the recompense will be evil. al Ankabut 45 There is special importance dedicated to the Friday prayer. This 
Prayer is performed in congregation at the local mosque and is led by an imam, leader. There are many other prayers in Islam, such as the funeral prayer and Eid prayer, which is a prayer traditionally performed on the mornings of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha yearly celebrations. Other important prayer rituals also include tarawiyah, which is a voluntary prayer offered every evening during the holy month of Ramadan. As with all of the five pillars of Islam, salah is a highly important obligation upon all Muslims and is essential to ensuring we stay within the boundaries of Islam and remain mindful of one's faith. Preparation before salah, before beginning to pray, one must be in a state of cleanliness. This is done by performing wudu, ablution. In other cases, tayammum, dry ablution, or guzzle, full wash of the body, are also acceptable methods of purification. The one who is required to perform the prayer must observe the following. Toba mature and a sane Muslim. Tohavi the proper intention to pray salah and to know whether one is praying obligatory or voluntary salah. Tohavi completed wudu. Tobe covering his her private parts. For males, clothes should cover the area from the navel, belly button, to just below the knees. For females clothes should cover the whole body except hands and face. Tobe praying at the prescribed times for each salah. Top ray with his her face directed towards the Kaaba in Mecca. Toe ear clean clothes. Top ray in a clean place. 13. Fasting. Fasting in Islam means abstinence from eating, drinking, smoking and sexual intercourse from dawn to sunset. It is an annual obligation during the month of Ramadan, the ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar. Fasting was imposed on former communities of believers in earlier divine religions. The Holy Quran states that the main purpose of fasting is to help us be more conscious of Allah and more obedient to Him. Allah says in the Holy Quran, O you who believe, fasting is prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those who were before you, so that you may become righteous. Fasting is for, specific number of days, but if any one of you is ill or on a journey, he should make up for those days. As for those who can only fast with hardship, a compensation can be made by feeding a needy person, for each day. But anyone who volunteers to give more, it is better for him. Yet fasting is better for you, if only you knew. Al-Baqarah, 183-184 O you who have faith in Allah and follow his prophet, Allah has ordered you to fast, as he ordered those before you, so that you may become mindful of Allah. Protecting yourself from his punishment by doing good actions fasting being one of the best of these. You are ordered to fast for a small number of days in the year. Yet whoever of you is ill, with an illness that makes fasting difficult, or traveling, then they do not need to fast, but they can make up for these days by fasting the same number of other days. Those who are able to fast, but do not, should compensate by feeding a poor person for every day they did not fast. Fasting is better for you than not fasting and feeding a poor person instead, if you only knew what goodness there is in fasting. This was the first of Allah's laws about fasting, whoever wanted to fast did so, and whoever did not want to fast was permitted not to, and fed a poor person instead. Afterwards Allah made fasting a duty for every able person who has reached puberty. Al-Baqarah 183-184 Someone might ask, why has Allah, exalted be he, in his wisdom, prescribed fasting for many nations? The answer is that the purpose of fasting is clearly defined as being. For the development of Allah consciousness, piety, in the believer's heart, since only Allah, the Almighty, knows who is actually fasting and who is not. Consequently, the one who is fasting refrains from eating and drinking based on an awareness of Allah. Regular fasting enhances that awareness, which subsequently leads to the implanting of righteousness in the heart of the individual. Fasting teaches sincerity and engenders devotion. It helps us develop a sense of social conscience, patience, self-restraint, willpower and compassion for needy members of the society. Fasting in the month of Ramadan is an obligatory act of worship for all Muslims who have attained puberty. Women who are having their menstrual period or who have not fully recovered from childbirth must postpone the fast until they are completely out of their given conditions. In addition, those who are ill or on travel may choose to postpone their fast. The month of Ramadan brings many blessings multiplied for those who do good. The poor and the needy receive food, clothing and money from the well-off in the community. 
zakat, a wealth purifying alms, and donations are usually given at this time of the year since many Muslims wish to take the opportunity of multiplied rewards from Allah. An important point to be noticed is that fasting enhances the inner self-observation among people especially children. Also, observing modesty and good conduct is more emphasized. During this month, Christians have what is called Lent or the fasting in Easter. We know they chose something to give up and during that period, they abstain from it. It could be something like chocolate, smoking, or newspapers. Christians in the Middle East give up anything that comes from animals, a bit more done than the Western Christians but they never do as much as Muslims. In addition, supererogatory fasting is encouraged for Muslims, though. It is voluntary, for its great rewards. Supererogatory fasting includes the following. 1. The best of observance is that of the prophet Dawood, David, peace be upon him, who used to observe the fast of every other day. The Messenger of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, The best of fasting is the fast of Dawood, peace be upon him. He used to fast for one day and break his fast for one day. Sunan al Nasai. 2. Also, among the most excellent fast observance after Ramadan is the month of Muharram, the first month of the Islamic calendar. The Messenger of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, The best month for observing fasting after Ramadan is Muharram. Muslim, it is emphasized to observe fasting the tenth of Muharram as it is a means of effacing all the sins committed during the past year. 3. Observing the fast of six days in Shawwal, the month that follows the month of Ramadan. It is preferable to observe them consecutively after the Eid. 4. Observing the fast of the white days, i.e. the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th of every month whose reward equals the lifetime's observance. 5. The observance of the fast of every Mondays and Thursdays. On these days man's deeds are displayed before Allah, therefore, it is praiseworthy to observe the fast of these two days. 6. The observance of the first nine days of Dhu Hijjah. The best of which is the ninth, the day of Arafat. Observing it atones for the sins that were committed in the past year and the year to come. 14. Hajj or Pilgrimage. Allah, the Almighty, says in the Holy Quran, the first house, of worship, established for mankind was the one at Baqa, Makkah, full of blessings and guidance for the worlds. In it are clear signs, such as, the standing place of Abraham, whoever enters it will be safe. Pilgrimage to the house is a duty owed to Allah upon all people who are able to make their way to it, whoever disbelieves, then Allah is in no need for the worlds. al Ron, 96-97 The first house built on earth for all people to worship Allah was the sacred house of Allah in Mecca, a house of worship full of worldly and sacred blessings, and guidance for all the worlds. In this place of worship are clear signs of its special honor and blessings, such as the acts of worship performed in it, and its landmarks. Including the stone that Abraham stood on when he was raising the walls of the Kaaba, and whoever enters it is safe, with no harm coming to them. People have a duty to Allah to perform the acts of Hajj in this house of worship, if they are able to do so. Whoever rejects the duty of Hajj disbelieves in Allah, and Allah is in no need of them or anything all in the worlds. Ali Imran, 96-97 Hajj or pilgrimage to Mecca is the fifth pillar of Islam. Muslims must go for Hajj to the Holy Land of Mecca once in their life as Allah, exalted be he, ordered Muslims in the Holy Quran to perform Hajj. And complete Hajj and Umrah for Allah. Al-Baqarah, 196. Perform Hajj and Umrah in a complete way, seeking only Allah's pleasure. If you are prevented from completing them by illness or an enemy, then you should sacrifice what is easily available of sacrificial animals, such as camels, cows, or sheep. Before you take off your iram, and do not shave your heads or cut your hair until the sacrificial animals have reached their place. If you are prevented from entering the sacred sanctuary, then perform the sacrifice wherever you have stopped. Yet if you can enter it, then do it on the day of sacrifice, 10th of Dhu al-Hijjah, or at least within the days of Tashrig, 11, 12 and 13 of Dhu al-Hijjah. Whoever among you is ill or has some problem with his hair or his head, like lice or something similar, whoever shaved his head for that reason, then that is not a problem. But they should instead fast for three days, or feed six poor people from the area of the sanctuary, or sacrifice a sheep to be distributed among the poor of the sanctuary. 
If you are living in times of peace, then whoever takes the opportunity to perform Umrah in the months of Hajj, enjoying in between those things that are not allowed when performing the pilgrimages, they should sacrifice whatever is easily available, a sheep, or a seventh of a camel or cow. If they are unable to make a sacrifice, then they must fast for three days during the days of Hajj to make up for it, and seven more days when they return home, making ten days altogether. This practice of having a break between Umrah and Hajj and sacrificing an animal or fasting for those unable to make a sacrifice is only for people who do not live within or close to the sanctuary of the sacred mosque. As for those who live within the sanctuary or close to it, they do not do this. Because they have no need to do to their constant being there and enjoying being able to make Umrah or Tawaf freely any other time of the year. Be mindful of Allah by following what He makes sacred law, and by respecting His limits, and know that Allah is firm in punishing those who go against what He instructs. Al-Baqarah 196 The Holy Kaaba, in the middle of the sacred mosque of Mecca, was built by Prophet Abraham and his son Ismail, peace be upon them, almost 4,000 years ago. That is before Moses, Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon them. Allah, exalted be he, says, the first house, of worship, established for mankind was the one at Baca, Mecca, full of blessings and guidance for the worlds. In it are clear signs, such as, the standing place of Abraham, whoever enters it will be safe. Pilgrimage to the house is a duty owed to Allah upon all people who are able to make their way to it, whoever disbelieves, then Allah is in no need for the worlds. Al Imran, 96 97. There are some prerequisites that must be found in a person for Hajj to be incumbent on him. 1. He she must be a Muslim. 2. He she must be an adult. 3. He she must be of a sound state of mind. 4. He she must be free. 5. He she must have the necessary physical power and financial ability. During Hajj, pilgrims remember the story of Abraham and his son Ismail when Allah ordered Abraham to sacrifice his only son. Abraham and Ismail obeyed Allah's command, but Satan appeared to them and to his mother to convince them to oppose Allah's command. They all stoned the devil and went ahead. But Allah saved Ismail by replacing him with a big sheep. The pilgrims sacrifice sheep and give their meat to the poor. Depending on various rules of Hajj rituals, this sacrifice can be obligatory or voluntary. As a reward from Allah, Hajj wipes off past sins, it was narrated that the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said. He who performs Hajj for Allah's pleasure and avoids all lewdness and sins will return after Hajj free from all sins as he was the day his mother gave birth to him. Al-Bukhari and Muslim In another hadith, the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said. The reward of Hajj Mabur, a faultless Hajj that is free of sin and is graced with divine acceptance and pleasure, is nothing save paradise. Al-Bukhari and Muslim